Um, now, let's go back to your military background for a moment, because you served as First Signal's uh, military consultant. Yes. Um, and you did some great work, and thank you so much again for your service and for the work you did on the film. Can you tell viewers what you did on the film in your capacity as our military consultant, like the uniforms and just the, the way things need to be structured and certain way posturing and things like that? Yes. Um, well, I know speaking with you um, when we first started out on this, that authenticity was going to be a very, very big part of this. Mm -hmm. Um, so in order to do that, one of the major things was the uniforms. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to kind of look at each character, myself and General Rieger, played by Paul Noonan, um, when they would have been in the military, what sort of campaigns would have been going on mm -hmm. during that particular point in time, um, what version of the uniform they would be wearing, right. because as we know, you know, every so often the military will change their entire uniforms. Um, so we needed to make sure that we got that right initially. And then it started from once we had their backgrounds um, set out and what type of skills they would have acquired during these times and things like that, then it was building what sort of um, awards they would have gotten. What are the ribbons mm -hmm. that coordinate with those awards? Mm -hmm. How many times you know, would they have been awarded something like this? Um, things like that. So it was very, very important that um, that they were wearing authentic badges and insignia and ribbons that represented what a person, a real person, serving mm -hmm. in that capacity would have had and would have worn and would have earned. Because right. um, there are so many uh, ribbons that are just yeah. gorgeous on film. Sure. It would have absolutely made no sense to anybody that would have known, you know, that <laughs> right. he couldn't have been alive during this point in time, you know, yeah. so that was very, very important to us. Um, so once we did that, then it was just building it and figuring out how it was going to work within the characters, um, mm -hmm. speaking with uh, Paul and kind of figuring out um, how we would address certain movements and mm -hmm. how we would kind of interact with each other um, and a level, the level of formality, particularly yes. when talking to the president. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, this is a very um, specific type of encounter mm -hmm. or meeting that we mm -hmm. all have. Mm -hmm. So it's a little um, less formal but even in that capacity, there are still some rules and regulations and customs and courtesies that you just do not break with. Right. So that was that was one of the main issues as well. Now, the scenes in the field. Okay, we shot, and you know where I'm going with this. Yes. We shot two consecutive weekends, yes. and we only picked the weekends that had a heat index, I think of 110, 112. Yeah, why not? We were all advised, the whole world was advised, don't go out. Yep. You know, stay in the shade, stay in air conditioning and all that. But those are the only weekends we had available on schedule and everything. Yet you look at the film, there's no sweat. Everyone's cool, calm and collected. I don't know how calm they were or collected, but they made their point. How did you do it as an actor um, working under those conditions? I mean, understanding, of course, there was breaks involved in this and that, but how did you do it? Well, I think that kind of goes back to my training, especially being in Iraq. I mean, hydration, hydration, yeah, right? right? And being used to having to wear um, mm -hmm. thick uniforms mm. and that level of heat. But it's interesting because, um, as you mentioned, we did take breaks um, mm -hmm. and hydrate as much as possible. But once you're out there, it was just basically just focusing on each other and focusing on what we were saying and mm -hmm. what was actually um, coming up and what we were what we were talking about and the magnitude of everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing that you couldn't tell how hot it was because yeah. I I very very much remember very vividly mm. how yes. hot it was and so I was always kind of nervous how that was going to come off on camera if yeah. you would be able to see that. But I just remember you know talking to um, Connor a lot about saying like okay you know here we go and like all right we're going to do this and mm -hmm. we're just going to blast the AC and. Yeah. Push through it. And you and it looked you I mean it looked like a, a regular warm day, but it didn't look like an abnormally warm day and people weren't yeah. the makeup wasn't sweating off their faces or anything. I recently learned in a film called it was a film in the 1950s um, called The Thing from Another World. And when they shot the scene in the Arctic when the ship had crashed into the ice, they shot that like in some valley in California with a hundred something degree. Mm -hmm. Now they had like pretend snow flowing around them. You would never have known. So I guess yeah. that's just as a real testament to the actors and their preparation for something yeah, like we that. We got lucky, for you, sure. You got lucky, <laughs> for sure. Um, now, is there anything else that you would like to add about your involvement in this film from A to Z, whatever, some question you feel I didn't ask. And then after you can certainly ask me some questions too. Um, 
No, I, I think that you asked some really good questions. Um, I just think that one of the interesting things that the viewers um, might pick up on is, you know, there are little tells throughout the film, mm -hmm. kind of giving you little hints here and there. And initially, I mean, I can see them obviously because, you know, I've, I've read the script, but I was in it, I know what's going on. But there are little things throughout the film that you can pick up that kind of like let you know where things are kind of headed mm. and, and where who might know who a little bit better than they're putting on mm -hmm. and where things might be going. Um, so I always thought that that was very, very interesting and something that I've noticed even when I've watched it again, I'll pick up additional little, you know, micro emotions mm -hmm. or micro expressions from certain people or little interactions that you might not necessarily catch the first time mm -hmm. through. Um, I also think um, from a film filmmaker's perspective, um, you know, most cinematographers and directors, yes, they have every shot means something, you know, they're, they're trying to convey something with every single thing. Um, with this one, I felt there was just so many different layers of what each shot was showing with the lighting, with the sound, with the movements, with the placements of every single object in every single scene. I thought that that was um, one, of the, one of the most interesting things coming from a producer's standpoint, seeing it from that side, um, I thought that was one of the most interesting things as well. Yeah, the reaction shots during the main meeting were quite were quite interesting. I remember writing that in the script. You know, it, it's like when Cedric says something, your character looks over at him or, or this or that. Because, you know, when you have just one big room with people sitting at a table, you don't want to look like a newscast. Right. So you want to look like something else is going on. And it was all in your reaction shots where you could see like your character was thinking or Cedric was raising an eyebrow or, you know, or when, when the national security advisor was putting her head to her hand to her head because Cedric was talking about something you probably should not have been talking about at the time. Exactly. But um, yeah, no, it was reaction shots that was that I thought was interesting. You know, it also goes back to the fact that when you and I first met in 2017, sitting in one of those rooms <laughs> was not a lot to do for a long time. No, there except really talk wasn't. about ideas for a film and and this and that it's hard to believe yeah. it's been four years yes four i think years. that's also one of the reasons why i like um the revelation scene if you will towards mm -hmm. the end of the film where you kind of see you know where everybody's going and what their motivation mm -hmm. has been in and their role because then you can kind of um link it back to those little moments that while you mm -hmm. might be seeing it the first time through say you know why is she, why is she doing that or why is he doing that yeah. why is he acting like this why why isn't she saying anything? Mm -hmm. And then finally at the end, you're like, oh my God, that's why. Because, yeah. you know, X, Y, and Z, yeah. this whole time she's been this person or yeah. that person. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I really, really appreciated that. You put some little, put some little clues in all the way, like little breadcrumbs. Exactly. Along right. for the viewer to follow. Or then link back to going, oh, that's why she yes. said or he said that. Yes. So let me ask you, is there anything that you have wanted to ask me as a filmmaker, director, writer, or just something that, has always crossed your mind with this project and you didn't want to ask me before, but now you're on camera. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. yeah. So, no now pressure. Is, now is the time. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that I uh, would like to know and have it on record, if yes. you will. So, yes, Major. Um, we, have, as you mentioned before, we met in 2017 doing mm -hmm. another project together. Yeah. Um, and when you were talking about possibly um, making something into a film that involved a bunker scene mm -hmm. and this and that, when you had started to officially write the script, um, what was it about um, Daniel Groom in particular, mm -hmm. his abilities as a cinematographer that drew you to him initially as being one of the people that you would first reach out to as being attached to this project? Well, I knew after writing the script I knew I, I had to work with someone that one, one believed in the script and the vision itself, but it, it's almost anyone would almost say that to work on a project if they wanted to, I, I believe in it, yeah, whatever. But it had to be someone that I believed in their filmmaking capabilities too. And when you showed me a short film you were in called They Don't Know, that he cast you in as a starring, in a starring role. And I was looking at his camera angles, the quality of the, um, the, the video work, um, the dialogue. And it was also the way he was able to market the film. It's it just the little things, like he, he had a, a nice IMDb profile with a picture and different things going on and all that. So you made an introduction to us in 2018. I believe it was, was it January, Dan? 
February, mm -hmm. okay. Um, a long time ago. And we met at a Starbucks. And here we are, you and I, all excited and brimming with activity. And here's this, like, filmmaker who we're meeting who is, you know. Poor Dan. He didn't know what Dan. he was getting into. He had no idea what he was getting into. I mean, me, I have a very commanding personality. You used to command. I mean, so here's this poor boy. Yeah. Okay, 20, how old were you at the time? 23? 25. 25 yeah. or something. And, I mean, well, we basically just, you know, look, this is going to happen. Yeah. And you're going to agree. No, it didn't work that way at all. But, no, he, um, he listened to what we had to say. And I think um, what I liked about him was his enthusiasm. Um, because I could see he was enthusiastic about his projects. Yeah. And this is, this is where um, we, I was like, well, this is someone I want to work with. And then he decided he wanted to work with it. And I think he knew make, making films was not, a, was not an easy task by any stretch. And I knew he wanted to make his own feature at one point. And actually it worked out well. He made a feature called Alton and Ground before we filmed for a signal. So, I mean, the whole situation has worked out rather well. But... Um, yeah, that's how I met Daniel Groom, through you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Because it's been a trio that has worked. Yes. Yeah, it's worked on all fronts. Um, I, I've been involved in this industry for many, many years. And I honestly, and I say this in all truthfulness, because I am on the record, um, I haven't worked with that this good of a partnership ever. And uh, you need it because filmmaking is not just a is not a one person show. I mean, you might be able to write, you might be able to act, you might be able to edit, you might even be able to score. But in the end, you need a team of people, and just like the military, you you need a Absolutely. team of people, and you and there is a chain of command. Yes. And as you say, you need to respect that chain. Absolutely. Yes, you do. <laughs> and um, and we did. We, we we respected all each other's talents, and you know. And it just, it just worked because I have no idea, here I am a filmmaker saying this, I have no idea how a camera works. <laughs> I know there's a record button and there we are. <laughs> I just admitted that, didn't yeah. I? So, but yeah, no, I mean, I thank you for that because um, when you think of how you and I met, I mean, I really, honest to God, until Naval Justice School, had no connection to the military at all. I, had, I started having more of an interest in it coming to museums like the American Heritage Museum and going to military reenactments. But then when I was cast uh, in, in, in their program at the Naval Justice School, meeting someone like you who had actually served in the military, because um, I would not have gotten the military aspects of this film right. Oh, I would have written what I wrote. But as you mentioned in your interview, the, the practical aspects of implementing that, the, the posturing, the, the way someone handles himself in front of the president, what will happen, what won't happen. Um, and you pointed up various areas in the script saying, yeah, this looks good from a, from a writing point of view, but this is the way it would really happen. And, you know, you, as, a, as a writer, you have to take that in consideration because the last thing I, would, I, I wanted or would want is some viewer to watch the film and they see, God, an Air Force major would never do that. Yeah. Never do that. I mean, yes, there was creative license you have to take sometimes with a film to get a narrative across. But at the same time, you know, as well as I know, that there will be members of the military watching this. And kudos to you for the, the uniforms and the awards getting that right. Because we came very close to using a costume renting company. And they would have looked brilliant on film. That, that, as you mentioned, there are many awards, uh, beautiful ribbons for a yes. variety, but meaningless in the grand scheme of things. So I hope, hope that answers yes, your question. Yes, it did.